Welcome to the Show Report Connection with Tommy. This video is on your October the 9th episode of uh, WWE Main Event and October the 11th uh, of SmackDown <coughs> event. Uh, featured match for the main event was Tommy to, to the Funk versus Drew McIntyre, Heath Slater, and Jinder Mahal in a handicap match. <coughs> Uh, the late Eddie Guerrero was born October 9th, 1967. <clears throat> uh, the former WWE champion died November 13th, 2005. He was found dead at the Marriott Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. His death was attributed to the underlying atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Uh, his widow, Vicky Guerrero, went to work for WWE after his death, and his daughter, Shaw Guerrero, is back with the uh, WWE Developmental UCBFCW, now NXT program. Eddie and Vicky also have a younger daughter, Sherilyn, and Eddie uh, has a daughter named Kaylee from another relationship. That part I do not know. Eddie was inducted into the Hall of Fame on April 1st, 2006. Ray Mysterio, Chavo Guerrero, and Chris Benoit delivered the introduction speech. Peach and Vicky accepted the honor. Former WWE Women's Champion Rockin' Robin, okay, Robin, De Robin Denise Smith, turned 49 years old. She was born on October 9th, 1964. And earlier in uh, the week, October 1st, was my birthday. Uh, uh, she worked for the WWE from 1987 to 1990. She was the daughter of Grizzly Smith, the sister of Sam Houston, and the half sister of Jake Roberts. For so wrestling veteran Stevie Richards, AKA Michael Manna turned 40 years, 42 years old. He was born October 9th, 1971. Manna picked a perfect game in the MLB 2K11, which he should have scored him a $1 million. But, however, he didn't uh, get the five because he, <coughs> he picked the perfect game prior to the contest starting. <coughs> NWA Southern All-Star Wrestling ran for uh, Friday Millersville, Tennessee. <coughs> I'm fighting with the following results. Kerry Offal and Nick Iggy defeated Hot Rod Beats and Shane Smalls. <coughs> Jose, uh, Josephus with uh, Abriella <coughs> beat so, uh, beat Charles Alexander, Gator McAllister, and Hammerjack. The Booster defeated Jason Nation and Kevin Weatherby. Chris Michaels defeated LT Falk, Jeremiah Smothers, and Hot Rod Biggs with, Je uh, with Jesse Bell. And thanks to uh, Lakeisha F. Oliver for those uh, results. October 10th for the NXT taping. The Full Sail Water Park, Florida promotion and was advertised to Cassius Ono, Mo Mojo Raleigh. Bo Dallas, C.J. Parker, Colin Cassidy, Xavier Woods, Tyler Breeze, Leo Kruger, Emma Corey Grace Page, Adrian Neville, Sami Zayn, Enzo Amore, and Mason Ryan. If you attend the taping, don't forget to send in the results. <coughs> the late Alex Karras died on October 10, uh, 2012. Karras was best known for his pro football and acting career, but he also worked for professional wrestling. As a professional wrestler, he wrestled prior to his NFL career and returned to the ring when he was suspended for full season for placing bets on the NFL game. October 11th, Friday, SmackDown taping would be held in Columbus, Ohio at the Nationwide Arena. Advertised talent for the taping was Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Dolph Ziggler, and Alberto Del Rio, Big Show, Wade Barrett, Triple H, The Shield, Biggie Lacey, and AJ Lee, and the Wyatt family. Christian appeared at the WWE NXT taping on er, on that particular Thursday. In the taping of .NET reader Stephen Sonneville did the following recap. Uh, the bonus track for October 10th NXT taping for, in Orlando was Peep Show with Jess Everett and Rio and both stars got great receptions. Christian even responded to a, to a chance for a five second pose by saying it wouldn't feel right to do it alone. And he had to crowd join in, which everyone did for a full spot. Prior to interviewing, interviewing Del Rio, Christian said that he saw the doctor the day and was not medically clear to compete. 
Push it over the shield, big time saying it was uh, their fault for the off screen beat down. He suffered a wall in front of his family, his best friend Edge, and his hometown. <clears throat> and here's the event that somebody gets in me. Episode number one from for NXT, Alex Riley, Tom Phillips, and Tenth Time on commentary. Byron Saxon served as ring announcer. Slate Randall defeated Yoshi Tattoo in match number one. Corey Graves got a promo and was jumped by Adrian Neville. Match number two, Sasha Banks defeated Emma. Paige tried to stop some away from interfering, but ended up costing Emma the match. Emma and Paige argued. Match number three, is The Ascension defeated Tommy, Tommy Taylor and K Casey Marin. Match number four, Alexander Rusev defeated CJ Parker. Rusev won by tap out. Some woman walked out during the match. And the name of, uh, of Lana, that was her debut. And then Tyler Breeze came out after, uh, afterwards, afterwards with scissors. He cut two dreads off of Parker. And then your main event was Corey Graves defeating Adrian Neville. And Graves won by submission. Episode number two. William Regal, Byron Sexton, and Renee Young were on commentary. And Kendall Skyer was the ring announcer. Match number one. Alexander Rusev and Sylvester Laforte defeated Enzo Omori and Big Cass. <coughs> Cass uh, Rusev made Cass submit. Lana was on the ramp watching. Sylvester Laforte was left by Rusev. And I admit that they and I did not pay close atten enough attention to see if he was beaten up by Rusev. Probably based on the rest of the night. And then match number two was... Aiden English defeating Jason Jordan. English had a great entrance. Crowd booing so loud and near me I couldn't hear the singing. English got the win. Gave a stay, uh, got the win. Enc encore after the match. Loved the, the roses. Regal gave a standing ovation. Match number three. Paige defeated Summer Rae with Sasha. Sasha was set to the back. Part way through the match after Paige won. Sasha ran back. To attack Paige, Emma made the save and then Emma inadvertently hit Paige. Another awkward interaction for the two. Uh, match number four, the main event, CJ Parker defeated Tyler Breeze. Long mediocre match. The crowd hated Parker, was so much into Breeze. Parker won, grabbed his head, uh, dreads back, and scissors. And then the crowd yelled, No, Tyler pulled, pulled, up, pulled away before Parker could, could cut his hair. Tyler's phone was actually left in the ring, so I figured that that would play in, but it didn't. Episode number three, A.Y. Back, back on commentary with Phillips and Young. They were on commentary as Byron was the ring announcing. Renee interviewed general manager J.B.L. Renee was in two places at once with uh, Renee at, at the booth and explained Sami Zayn not being at the taping because... JBL left him at home. They showed a WWE website exclusive interview earlier in the show where Zane complained that his title match with Bo being restarted at the previous taping. And it's a conspiracy by Triple H and JBL. And this was a response in WWE's exclusive interview with Bo Dallas saying that he's taking a vacation. <coughs> Bo, Bo Dallas versus the World Tour. Uh, they had him being really goofy. Don't stop believing. Match number one, Alexander Rusev def uh, defeated Sylvester Laporte. Rusev was introduced by a new woman who was speaking Gothic. Or whatever you call it, that they're doing now. And Sylvester Laporte tried to play, pay off Rusev. Short squash match by Rusev. Match number two, Leo Kruger defeated El Local. So, according to the uh, reporter, it is Leo won. Boring match. Match number three of the Ascension, Ascension defeated two enhancement wrestlers, two scrubs entering the ring, probably the El Locals. The crowd was into them for what, whatever reason, and the Ascension made their entrance. Then went on to get the win. Mojo Raleigh uh, defeated Tyler, Ty Dillinger. Formerly known as Sean Spears. Why is Mojo over? Why is he even booked? So that was match number four. And match number five, the main event, Luke Harper defeated Cassius Ono. 
Very long match. Both guys laid it in. Decent false finishes. Harper won the best match of the night. And that's not saying much, as it was not as good as it may seem, like it would be on paper. Episode number four, Tentai, Byron and Regal World commentary, and Kendall Sky handling the ring announcing. Match number one, Summer Ray and Sasha defeated Bailey and Charlotte. Charlotte uh, attacked Sasha during the break, during the match. Really? He joined Sasha and Summer. Wow. Match number two, Aiden English defeated Camacho on Quartet. And roses. Match number three, Mason Ryan defeated Danny Burch. The kingdom is divided. That's a joke. Britain versus Wales. Ryan wins. Match number four, your main event, Adrian Neville defeated Corey Graves. Uh, Corey Graves in a best of three falls match. Neville got the first fall. Graves got the second. Lynn Neville took third. And a win. Pink Show with Chris Lynn and Just Alberto Del Rio. There was a funny moment where they were getting up in the ring with the carpet and then changed their mind. When it looked like crap and had to rush to clean up the fuzzies, Christian talked about John Cena's match of Hell in a Cell. Russo came out. Del Rio tried to run away, and Ricardo Rodriguez threw him back in the match, and there was a tiny beating of Del Rio by Russo before Russo fumbled Ricardo. Overall, a very weak offering from NXT. It was clear that some talent was on the international tour, which was Sane Dallas. Cesaro, etc. Well, Cesaro was actually on Raw, the main brand, and that was the end of the taping for that. Now for the October 14th uh, news, Ring of Honor, uh, there, there are no TNA or Ring of Honor shows for the week. TNA holds the Bound for Glory Fan Fest at the Hall of Fame Ceremony in San, San Diego. Uh, an actual BFG pay-per-view on Sunday. Ring of Honor was uh, uh, October 26th, which is Battle Glory. 12, event in Chicago, Ridge, Illinois. Looking for Prime Spider, so... Yeah. Happy birthday, TNA commentator Taz. Her real name is Peter Sinner. She uh, turned 46. Born all, October 11th, 1967, he worked his final match on June 11th when he defeated Jerry the King Lawler at an ECW one night stand pay per view. Former WWE star Rikichi, aka Solapo Fatu Jr., turned 48. He was born October 11th, 1965. He is a father of the current stars Jimmy A. and Jay Uso. Ring announcer Tony Chimmel turned 52. He was born October 11, 1961. Chimmel had been in WWE since 1991. He started as a ring technician. He also filled in early for Howard Finkel as a ring announcer. TNA wrestler Andy Douglas turned, as a former TNA wrestler, Andy Douglas turned 35. He was born October 11, 1978. Douglas worked in half of the natural as the tag team with Chase Stevens. No pro wrestling shows. This is free ESPN Classic. Global Supercar Wrestling shows start the following Monday night. The late Art Bar would have, uh, he was born on that same date, 1966. Bar debuted in the Pacific Northwest Territory in 87. Had a brief run in WCW as the juicer, but he was best known for his work in Mexico as the Love Machine. And as a tag team partner of Eddie Guerrero, Barr died on uh, November 23, 1994. Former wrestler Paul Burchill, real name Paul Burchill, Paul uh, Burchill, Burchill, turned 34. He was born October 8, 1979. He was saddled with a campy pirate gimmick in WWE. He showed a ton of potential, and I was disappointed when he was released in February 2010 and surprised that he was, wasn't picked up by any. Other promotion, not even TNA. His Wikipedia pages state that he was a, he worked full time as a firefighter. <clears throat> and dot net reader John wrote to announce he has launched the forum. Website Pro Wrestling is real. You can check out the forum at pwi okay, pwisreal.com backslash forum or forward slash forum for forum dot h PHP. Canadian Wrestling Elite ran a show in Fisher Ranch, Manitoba on October 4th. 
with the following results, Danny Dugan defeated Mentalo. Corey Kincaid defeated Kevin Cannon in a loser eats dog food match. Darren Dalton defeated AJ Sanchez. Darren Dalton defeated AJ Sanchez. Then the Matt Fairplane uh, beat Cannibal. Rich Matthews beat, beat Cliff Corleone by disqualification. Tyson Moore beat Brian Rich and Nate Hardy in a three-way dance to retain the TV title. Rich Matthews and Danny Dugan beat Darren Dalton and Cliff Corleone. For more on upcoming CWE events featuring former WWE wrestler Dean Smithy, follow CWEcanada.ca. Block of Supercar Wrestling aired on ESPN Classic on 6, 6, 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. No information about those matches. Former Ring of Honor Champion Low Key, a.k.a. Brandon Silver Wrestling, announced his retirement from pro wrestling on, on Monday due to all Japan not honoring their contract obligations of medical care after being injured in an AJPW. I'm re he's quoted by saying, I'm retiring from pro wrestling. Follow him online at twitter.com. Backslash One World Warrior. He also uh, worked as low key for TNA and Cabal and WWE and was a standout TNA's exhibition. Of course, he's only 34 and this is pro wrestling, so you can't rule out a change of heart. But at this time, he was pretty straightforward about his intention. Ray Wyatt suffered a leg injury during Saturday's live event in Providence, uh, Rhode Island. Wyatt was involved in a six-man tag and had to be carried backstage by Luke Harper and Eric Rowland, according to PW Torch's live event report. He has yet to comment on the injury, and of course he's he has returned. Okay, October 14th, advertised Dark Man, Dark Man event for... Raw was shown as Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan and CM Punk versus Curtis Axel and Paul Heyman in a handicap match again. Seems like it's an ongoing event. Former Diva Stacey Keeber turned 34. She was born October 14, 1979. Keeper has been the subject of rumors that she's interested in and have ever returned so far. False. Chagoro, who wrestled as Raquel Diaz, turned 23 years old. She was born October 14, 1990. Oldest daughter of Vicky Guerrero and the late Eddie Guerrero. Still in WWE developmental. Even after a one year break, even though she said something about going to school, possibly retiring then. Nikita Cole, was a Hall of Famer Nikolai Volkov. Real name, Joseph Nikolai. Perusovic, turned 66 years old. He was born October 14, 1947. Volkov was introduced, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2005 by Jim Ross. Shaggy Tudo, aka Joseph Utzler of Insane Clown Posse, turned 39 years old. He was born October 14, 1974. Hall of Famer Dusty Rhodes, aka Virgil Riley Reynolds Jr. Little Benny is 68th birthday on Saturday, October 12, 1945. He was born, of course, father of Cody and Goldust. Supercard Wrestling Block, home 6 p.m. to 1 p.m. again on another night. On that particular night. Uh, WNN <coughs> announced prior to Raw. <coughs> he was champion AJ. Received medical clearance to return to the ring. She has been sidelined since she suffered a concussion at the battleground pay per view. <clears throat> AJ was a ringside for a Divas match at, and her physical involvement was limited in applying for finisher afterwards. Chad Kelly attended Bundy's Raw and posted the following October 14th results. <clears throat> from St. Louis it usually has a full house. All uh, seats were upgraded because most of the upper deck was covered. So they gave lower seats. Superstar State was uh, Damian Sandow defeating Kofi Kingston. Ziggler defeated Biggie Langston with a zigzag in a dark match. Main, main event, Daniel Bryan defeated Randy Orton with a running knee. <coughs> Raw on October 14th. Michael Cole welcomed us to Raw. <coughs> he was joined in commentary with JBL and Jerry King Lawrence. Justin Roberts introduced the Hall of Famer. 
Shawn Michaels, who made his entrance complete with Pyro, announces folk at ringside. Well, Michaels played to the live crowd. Michael thanked the fans who voted for him, the special referee in the Hell of Cell. He recalled training Daniel Bryan, said he's never liked Randy Orton, yet noted his best friend still, Triple H. <coughs> Michael said he <coughs> can't understand why people are concerned about his connections to everyone. And then <coughs> said he respects the Hell of Cell. He said he is the very first Hell of Cell match in St. Louis. He thinks we were thinking about that makes him happy he's retired, and he guaranteed that two men will enter in the hell cell. One man will walk out as a new champion. Randy Orton's music hit, and he walked the, uh, into the ring with Michael Cole. He called HBK facing Undertaker in the first hell of cell match in 1997. Lawler noted that they were in Orton's hometown, saying that he had a match with the Miz coming up. Well, he would make it quick. Orton said he was born and raised in St. Louis, where it went to do some cheers. Orton said he knows the people of St. Louis better than anyone. Take it from me when I say that the people of St. Louis aren't all that bright, Orton said. Randy said that he sees through HBK and that he knows that no matter how great he once was, Orton will always be better than him, and said he eats them up, not eats them up inside. Oh, snap! You're talking? As my, Michael, my, uh, Charles Michael replied. Before telling Orton he should uh, be worried about Daniel Bryan, or Orton said he's going to destroy <coughs> and get destroyed in Hell of Cell, and Michael will have, have to watch and then raise his hand in victory. The fans started chanting, No, at Orton. Who told them to shut up? Orton said, Everyone knows Michael is no stranger to screw jobs. He said that if HBK, HBK screws him over, there will be no coming back for him. Michael accused Orton of trying to Im intimidate him. <clears throat> he said that if Orton tried, he would kick his head off and shoulders. <clears throat> Michael said that if Orton was, <clears throat> was not, and down to that, he had two words for you. <clears throat> Orton tried to attack Michael from behind. HBK went for chance with the music, but Orton ducked to ringside. And Miz came out and attacked Orton from behind, heading into a commercial break. They did a good job of establishing the friction between Orton and Michael for Hell of Cell. However, <coughs> Randy's job, uh, Randy's the job to Shawn Michaels is better than him. Don't ring, <coughs> don't ring true, and it's not like uh, he's absurd that he's uh, it's, it's short hit for Orton. Well, they just came off flat. The Miz attack was a nice hook lead, heading into a commercial break. <coughs> Uh, so we get Randy Orton versus Miz. Match was drawn with Jordan in progress. Let Orton get the bettering of Miz early on. <coughs> Orton took Miz to ringside and went for the, hang the draping DDT, team, but Miz fought him off and brought match back to inside the ring. Miz hit the do double axe handle to the top, off the top rope, and then set up for the score crushing finale, but Orton avoided it. Miz called Orton with a nice kick to the thigh and then set up for the figure four. Wyatt Family Image uh, appeared on the screen and the lights. Uh, Go out in the building. When the light came back on, a few seconds later, Ray Wyatt was <coughs> seated in the rocking chair on the stage. Luke Harper and Eric Rowe stood behind him. Orton was distracted. Miz with the RKO and pinned him. And the whole match took 5 minutes 15 seconds of TV time. After the match, Wyatt told Miz that he is an <coughs> epitome. <coughs> Of everything he hates in the world, he mentioned the limelight, diamonds, and fame, and questioned what it will take for Miz to satisfy his obsession with fame. Wyatt told Miz that he doesn't want him to be afraid or to suffer. He's just going to put him down, follow the buzzards, as Wyatt concluded. It may seem odd that Orton would need a distraction to beat Miz, but I think it's actually called for, in this case, Orton destroyed Miz in, a, in his own home. Home time. A simple loss of Orton here would really hurt him, whereas it gives him an excuse for the loss, and perhaps it even an exit from his pro program with Orton. You have to like it uh, the way that they did hit the leg injury to the Wyatt is nursing by only showing him seated on stage. A graphic noted. Uh, touted that the uh, WWE app has been downloaded 8 million times. Meanwhile, Pro Wrestling.net app only downloaded 65 billion times. Okay, that's not very true. 
Well, available on most platforms. Do a search for ProWrestling.net wherever you, you, you get your apps and it should pop right up. Match number two, Santino Morella versus Fandango. <clears throat> How many times have we had this? Even, uh, even all the way up to March 2014. Fandango went up top early. Santino cut him off. Later, Santino put on the cobra sleeve, but Fandango ducked. And Santino came in face to face with Summer Ray on the stage. Fandango rode up Santino and pinned him. The match took 2 minutes 30 seconds. A forgettable 2 minutes that didn't really help Fandango nor hurt Santino. The announcer is hyping the WWE Tag Team Championship match for later in the show. Waller thanks some Temple Pilots. <coughs> some Temple Pilots for the song Out of Time serving as Helen Cell theme song. Backstage Paul Heyman showed Brad Maddox, Winnie Josie, and Punk low blowing right back at Battleground. Heyman said he wanted more than a rematch. He said Punk embarrassed Maddox. So he believes that he should get to pick the stipulation. Heyman suggested Punk versus Ryback and Curtis Axel on a handicap match saying it was best for business. Maddox said it didn't seem fair to Punk. Heyman called, uh, called Punk a cheating weasel. Maddox uh, said he never thought he would hear a walrus refer Punk as a weasel. Maddox looked, uh, hooked, booked Ryback versus our truth and seeing Punk. Versus Curtis Axel on a beat the clock challenge. Maddox said that if Ryback wins the challenge, he will let Heyman pick the stipulation. However, if he wins, if he wins the challenge, <clears throat> if Punk will get to pick the stipulation if he wins the challenge. <clears throat> now to spoke to ringside about a petition that NXT developmental wrestlers Xavier Woods starting to bring back Big Show. <clears throat> JBL said Woods. Should mind his own business and question who he who he is. <coughs> Woods made a name for himself in the TNA exhibition while working under the name Consequences Creed, if you didn't know that. Coleslaw set up a John Cena video <coughs> package that concluded a graphic noted that Cena will return at Hell and Cell in two weeks. Coleslaw spoke about Cena's title match against Alberto Del Rio. A brief video, video package aired at, uh, for Cena focusing on the love for the industry and made him seem like a man of the people. <clears throat> Los Matadores and El Torito make their entrance. JBL seems to be the most excited person in the building as he yelled, Olay! Along with the interest theme, uh, <clears throat> the theme track. Uh, just in time for the Monday Night Football game, kick off Los Matadores and, and El Torito. I mean, uh, who could possibly turn the channel? Knowing that their la latest match with 3MB is coming up. <clears throat> so we get the match. Torito swiveled his hips. Yes, they did, and then lured him into a dive. From Primo or Epico or Fernando or Diego. They didn't have any names then. Uh, they're not called Fernando or Diego. Or Nacho Barrera or whatever the hell their names are now. Los Matadors hit the finisher on Sato and pinned him. Now Torito joined them in, in beating him up afterwards. <clears throat> That's be beating up Zinder afterwards. Los Matadors won in four minutes by second match. So, once the inevitable feud between Los Matadors and the Real Americans runs its course, then what? The video package recapping the Stephanie McMahon and Big Show segment from last week. It was a replay of the segment they replayed 750 times last week. They showed the footage of Show knocking out Triple H at the end of last week's Raw. Both all said that there have been rumors that Triple H's condition all week. He said Triple H and Stephanie would address the situation after the break. The authority is here, he said. Commercial break. <laughs> and they had for the WWE main event television show hyping Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler for the U.S. Championship. <clears throat> In case you haven't noticed, Hunter and Stephanie are now known as the authority. I would assume that that was dated uh, main event ad since. Uh, we've seen the match before and it's hard to believe that they actually planned that far ahead. I can't remember them actually doing a main event ad in months. So I assume it's legit. Of course, WWE has been known to change their main event. Of course, they got cards up to change all the time. No plans without explanation. So I guess we'll find out what and when the show is taped on, on Tuesday in Kansas City. By the way, looking for correspondence. And I'll post them in the next uh, video. And to <coughs> get, get the <coughs> that posted. Uh, Triple H, Stephanie headed to the ring holding their hands. Stephanie took the mic and said, 
she learned a valuable lesson that uh, she could never allow her kindness to be mistaken for a weakness, uh, to pause, to allow the crowd to chant, you got knocked out. But Stephanie said, she and Hunter bailed out, make sure, more, more times than she could, could remember. Uh, yet they, they were repaid with a dis disrespect and insubordination. Stephanie noted that Big Show is fired and that they are selling his house and re repossessing anything he owns of value. She said Show will be charged with trespassing and assault. Stephanie said that there were rumors that Hunter broke his jaw, but she gushed out about what, Hunt, what a man Hunter is and how he is, he is now WWE. Rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated, Hunter said. He noted that he has been CEO for two years, or COO for two years. He said that he has put aside his personal and professional needs. He said every man has his breaking point. And his was last week when the fans chanted yes, and he was lying in, in the ring unconscious. Congratulations to Hunter for becoming the first person in history to reach his breaking point while unconscious. Hunter said that after all he has done, he and Stephanie apparently are villains. Hunter said that if the fans want him to be, be the bad guy, then he'll give them a, a reason to call him the bad guy and something like that they have never seen before. He said show will live in financial ruin and anyone, even though the word yes, should start to pray. Daniel Bryan's music played and he had to ring in a pink version of his orgasm shirt. <clears throat> Brian uh, did the extended round of yes cheerleading on the stage. Before he was attacked, behind by Alberto Del Rio then tagged him with a super kick. Stephanie asked Brian if he if he was saying something. I guess you're finished. She said, "Allow me to introduce you to your opponent tonight." Alberto Del Rio as Hunter did a mock round of yes more gun. While the fans chanted no chance. Backstage, Ryan Axel. But the right back and Paul Heyman were shown walking as Coleslaw set up the beat the clock challenge for after the break. Did anyone really think Hunter was going to act like his jaw was broken and not caught for several weeks? I like the idea of Hunter's character accepting that he and Stephanie are villains. As I am hopeful that this means confusing approach that they had been taking is finished. Right back with Paul Heyman versus R Truth in a beat the clock challenge. The bell rang. Truth headed to the ringside and smiled as he intentionally wasted his time. He fled back from Ryback, but Heyman got in his way, allowing Ryback to hit Truth from behind. He announced the knowledge that Goldberg chants and pipped uh, the Goldberg DVD. Ryback got several two counts. Truth made a comeback, hit a missed drop kick for a two count of his own. In the end, Ryback avoided a scissor kick and put Truth away with a shell shot. Five minutes, 44 seconds is, is the time to beat. I like the way our truth headed to ringside to waste time. It has made, made him look like he was outsmarting the heel. <clears throat> All the finish attempts he kicked out of also made it seem like he put a good fight. <clears throat> the announcers noted that Punk had to beat Curtis Axel in less than five minutes, 44 seconds to win the challenge. They also hyped the tag, tag title match as they go to commercial. <clears throat> Stephanie McMahon walked <clears throat> walk backstage, <clears throat> approached Bella Trent, Stephanie for forced a hug on debris and congratulated her on her engagement. Stephanie recalled uh, Brian standing over Triple H when he was knocked out last week. Stephanie asked if Brian will be chanting with Bray facing Tamina Snooker. And she said AJ Lee would be at ringside, but Nikki would not be. It's a shame that Nikki's relationship with John Cena has been publicized by Total Divas because it would have been a cool flavor if her character hooked up with Randy Orton. <clears throat> Tons of Funk and Funk and Axel performed their interest as Cole Saw and Tons of Funk will be in action after the break. First they have Matadors and now Tons of Funk. Did something in the minute by minute ratings tell WWE that how many tag teams are good for Heading into a commercial break? And so, I'll help us all. <clears throat> so we get Real Americans versus Tons of Folk. A pre-tape promo from Colton was shown. He doesn't like Motorola's Matador, shockingly. Uh, Cesaro performing neutralizer. Clay for 
Uh, to win the match for his team afterwards, Cesaro set up for the swing on play. Swagger beat up 10 sides, so Cesaro performed the move on instead. Will America's won in 5 minutes 45 seconds. Cameron and Naomi wore purple and gold outfits, uh, which is a appropriate since they're cheering for Tons of Fun. Is a last lost cause, just like the cheering for the Minnesota Vikings this season. Uh, the first Vikings fans who email me is a month. Lifting, don't lose hope. Uh, Selling this, we'll get a hearty go after self. Email response. <clears throat> Video package uh, featuring Lily and Garcia Regular, Thomas Reveal, thinking about losing loved ones to breast cancer. Match number six, Tamina Swither with AJ Lee versus B. Bella. B received a few cheers and slapping hands as she uh, headed to the ring. B was the early aggressor and performed. The test pass off to Tamina on the floor. Tamina came back and ran her into the ring and clotheslined her from behind before throwing her back in the ring. Then he came back with a missile drop kick for the second row before performing the worst running knee in history. Then followed up with a second. They went for a face buzzer, but uh, Tamina avoided it and then blasted her with a big boot to get the win. After the match, Tamina performed a Samoan drop and a shoulder breaker on Bree that followed up with a super flash flash. AJ followed up with a back widow. Nikki Bella came, uh, came out and the hills backed off. And the Divas match took the normal four minutes and four and a half minutes. This is reason number 554,897. Why my girlfriend and I have never bothered to get. Ain't got a girlfriend. Well, that's a little reporter. Backstage, uh, with Stephanie McMahon and Brad Max watching a monitor or something when Daniel Bryan stormed into the room, upset over what happened to Bree. Stephanie told Bryan not to blame her for what happened to Bree, then asked, Don't you have a fiance to attend to? And reason number 554,898. Never really got married as a uh, response to Stephanie would have been. She'll be fine, but what are you going to do later? <clears throat> Max number seven, see a punk versus Florida Sackle. Beat Talk Challenge. Time to beat. Five minutes and 44 seconds. Axel was in control of the match. Scored their fall heading into the final minute. Punk caught Axel with a kick and GTS and him with 11 seconds remaining. And he won five minutes 33 seconds after the match. Heyman headed to the stage. Punk called him on the mic. And noted that uh, he gets to pick the stipulation for his match in the Hell in a Cell. And as said, he learned, uh, Punk said he learned from Heyman, who is the mad scientist of WWE. He said he would have a handicap match with right back and Paul Heyman. Was it saying Punk inside the Hell in a Cell structure? I'm surprised that you're going with two Hell in a Cell matches. Putting the match inside the structure makes the feud feel a little more intense. It certainly. More appealing than the Punk vs. Ryback rematch, if nothing else, by the way, in Continental title, somehow means even less than it did in the beginning of the show. Daniel Bryan made his entrance for his match against Del Rio, the cut commercial. <coughs> non title match, Del Rio controlled early offense, took a couple of kicks and went to another and performed the backstabber to regain control. Del Rio came up bleeding from the mouth after an offensive flurry for Brian. Del Rio mocked Brian's bug at him, yes, routine, and then charged only to have Brian close at him. Del Rio caught Brian with a missile drop kick for a close two count at 11 minutes 15 seconds in. The announcer spoke about the authority wanting out of his match. Respect my attack high. Brian began his comeback with kicks and uh, caught Del Rio with a running drop kick in the corner. He performed Horn Conrado off the rope for a two count. <clears throat> Suicide dive onto Del Rio, then a missile drop kick for a good near fall. Randy Orton appeared on the big screen. He said he saw, he saw what happened to your sweet fiance. He said he was very sorry that happened. He said he was going to check on her to see if uh, she was okay. Orton entered the trainer's room and closed the door. The Bella's friends uh, could hit. Could be heard screaming. Del Rio rolled up Brian, but Brian kicked out. Brian caught Del Rio with a kick and then left the ring and headed to backstage. So, Alvaro Del Rio wins the match by count out in 16 minutes 25 seconds. 
Brian Burton said to Trader's room, asked me if he was okay. No one cared about Nikki. Apparently, Randy Orton attacked Brian from behind. Orton glared at Bree and then left the room. With Brian lying on the floor, Bree on a, Bree and a trainer checking on Brian. They what you will say about Randy Orton, but I see him as a real gentleman. He could have went after, after both Bell twins, but he didn't. Uh, sure, he attacked Brian from behind, but he also did so in the trainer's room where he could receive immediate medical condition. This whole thing is just another example of why uh, office romances don't work. Sure, it's great when you first start. Sticking to it is a Susie from accounting. But then Bob from shipping gets jealous and starts stalking her. Eventually, Susie turns out to be a real slut and hooks up with Psycho Bob behind your back. And then uh, goes with what has the nerve to tell every female in the office that you have the clap. Granted, it's true, but couldn't uh, you just be yourself? And Bob? Uh, backstage, uh, the Shield talked about Brian being in the trainer's room and maybe the Rose brothers will join them. Triple H and Stephanie enters uh, the room. Stephanie reminding them that the Rose beat, beat them and uh, Hunter told them that the match is now no disqualification. Finish it, he said. Stephanie and Hunter may, uh, made out after the Shield left the room. Another John Cena air, uh, video aired. The one featuring Santa with uh, daily video updates on his recovery. The announcer's gushed over. Cena labeled him <coughs> an amazing human being. They discussed his World Heavyweight Championship matchup with El Bogo Del Rio. Ring entrances his floor. Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes were shown. Commercial break. Cole saw Hype and Punk making their appearance on Friday SmackDown show. And SmackDown taping is in Kansas City, not Columbus. As it was, it was mistakenly uh, done earlier. Don't care where it is or where you're from. We need correspondent. First, the unbeaten Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, don't uh, get a correspondent. Uh, so keep that in mind, KC readers. If you, or viewers, if you can't help with a great report, <coughs> so be it. That's why I got to go to dirt cheap. What other sources? <coughs> Match number nine. The Shield, Seth Rollins, Rover Reigns. Uh, versus Cody Rose and Goldust <coughs> in a no disqualification match. All the WWE Championship Rose Brothers jump out to a quick start. Crowd was quiet aside from a few fans standing for Goldust. <coughs> Cody worked over, was worked over by the tag champs. He made a live and le leap into the, into the tag. His brother, he came up a little short. It looked awkward, but the ref allowed the tag. <clears throat> Goldust got getting a fall, but then he dove at Rollins. Missed the trouble to ringside, heading into a commercial break. And for SmackDown, asked, what's next for Cody and Goldust? Might time since uh, they never seem to get any on Raw, even uh, the work of main event. After the break, the chance worked over Goldust in the corner. Cody tagged in and was a flurry on Reigns. A no sold the uppercut from the mat. But Cody remained in control. And Cody caught him with a top, him with a moving top, then knocked Rollins off the apron with a kick. Cody, who had a black eye, performed a springboard drop kick on Reigns, but Rollins broke it up. The pin attempt. Ambrose interfered in the match with the shield. Set up for the triple power bomb on Cody. Gold us in the ring to, for the save. He cleaned house until Reigns came back. Got the better of him briefly. As it goes past the three-hour mark at ringside, Rollins power bomb rose into the barricade at ringside. Back inside the ring, Goldust went on a run and ended up being clotheslined. Everyone to ringside and tumbled to the floor along with Rain. Goldust fought off Ambrose on the floor, but Rain got to his feet and speared him into the timekeeper's area. The crowd was rocking at this point. Fans started to cheer, and then Big Show was shown entering through the crowd. Show punched out Rollins and Ambrose on the floor and then jaw with Reigns. Cody went for the beautiful disaster, but Reigns ducked out of the way and Cody fell through the mat. Big Show reached through the ropes and caught Reigns with a punch. Cody covered Reigns for the win. Big Show headed back into the crowd and led in the Borgasm. Yes, Chance. Triple H came to the ring and threw a little fit while Show smiled in the crowd, and Cody and Goldust just celebrated on the stage with the tag titles. 
Hillary and Goldust defeated Shield in no disqualification in 19 minutes 20 seconds. As it's a, as a nice to see Cody and Goldust win the tag straps. They went over Rollins and Reigns. Their battleground made them look even much better. They fought back. And fourth with the shield here, but Cody missing the finisher and winning only because the show's parts didn't exactly make Cody and Goldust look good. The match was entertaining, and the live crowd ate it up and went on a quiet early, be, uh, being really into the action down the stretch. The tag title change was probably enough to save the show. For many viewers, I was bored throughout the good portion of the show. Yet to sell and sell on the paper, the Hell in Cell pay-per-view yet. They did a good job of building up Cena's return. Meanwhile, it felt like it was a wasted appearance for Shawn Michaels. The segment with Orton was fine, but <clears throat> though we would have seen an interaction with him and Triple H as well as uh, with Daniel Bryan, perhaps we will come next week for the Go Home Show. And that concludes my video for October 14th. Peace out. God bless.